On behalf of the Santa Monica City Council, I want to extend our deepest thanks for your service and to acknowledge and honor the sacrifices you and your families have made for the people of this country. And I particularly want to thank Representative Ted Liu for joining us today. Along Along with my colleagues, Mayor Pro Tem Kristen McCowan, who I haven't seen but may be here, uh, Council Members Gleam Davis, Phil Brock, Christine Parr, and Lana Negretti for being here. We thank them as well. We also have Santa Monica City Manager David White, Assistant City Manager Susan Klein, Deputy City Manager Anuj Gupta, Police Captain Saul Rodriguez, Fire Chief Danny Alvarez, and Dr. Jeffrey from Santa Monica College. And now please join me in thanking the following special guests from the U.S. Army. Song Ki Hong, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army and lead organizer of today's ceremony. Thank you. Jay McCann, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army Emeritus. Thank you for being here. Bill Wenger, Army Reserve Ambassador. And Brigadier General John Cushing, Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Army Recruiting Command. I also want to thank Martin Choi, Terry Moore, and Max Stokinger for joining us. Today's program would not have been possible without our U.S. Army partners and the Santa Monica Peer Corporation, so thanks to all of you. And now, if we all could please stand for the posting of colors, followed by the national anthem. Now, I have what to me is a real pleasure and honor uh, for the last Veterans Day ceremony that I'll be leading, and that is to introduce a true friend to Santa Monica, a friend to me in public service and in real life, and above all, a friend to veterans. Congressman Ted Lew was a former active duty officer in the U.S. Air Force and was part of the Air Force Reserve until his retirement last year with the rank of Colonel. Please welcome Representative Lew. So hello, I am so honored to be here on Veterans Day and first of all, thank you, Mayor Sue Himmerich, for your awesome leadership of the city of Santa Monica. Santa Monica is a better place to live, work, and play because you serve. You're all also going to hear from Gleam Davis and thank you, Gleam, for your service to Santa Monica and also Gleam has been speaking at the Academy Day uh, that I do for people who are interested in attending one of our nation's service academies. And so thank you for doing that as well and as a parent of a person who attended West Point. So thank you for that. And I want to thank all of you here uh, for coming out to support our nation's veterans. So I'm going to talk about two things. One is an update on laws that have passed. 
to help our nation's veterans. And then I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about why we all should support veterans and think about that. So in terms of some laws that recently passed, very pleased that Congress passed on a bipartisan basis the act known as a PAC Act that is going to provide compensation to veterans who were injured uh, from toxic exposures at burn pits and, and other places. So that's going to help a lot of veterans uh, and their families uh, across America. Second law uh, that we got passed uh, is something that was in the National Defense Authorization Act and it becomes effective today. Uh, so today, all veterans and go to our families will have access to lifetime free passes to our nation's national parks. And then third, uh, in my congressional district specifically, I was very pleased that one of the first laws I got passed under the Obama administration was to have a whole new master plan at the West Los Angeles VA, one of our nation's largest hospitals. Uh, that plan is now taking shape and taking effect. A few months from now, a number of buildings are going to open, and at its, its full build out, it's going to house over 1,200 veterans who are homeless. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all uh, the other folks who serve uh, our state, city, country, and nation who are in uniform, our police officers and our firefighters. Uh, every day uh, they enter a job that they know they could put their life at risk to save someone else. So thank you for that. So now I want to ask you all, uh, why do we support veterans? Is it just because it's the right thing to do? Well, yes, that is actually the right thing to do, right? They uh, served our nation and they uh, put their lives at risk. But the other reason we do this is because uh, we have an all-volunteer military. Uh, I previously served in active duty in the United States Air Force. I then stayed in the reserves. I retired last year at the rank of colonel. And it was very clear that uh, we have an amazing military, but it depends on people who want to sign up and enter our armed forces and if they see that we treat veterans badly it's going to be a disincentive for people who want to enter our nation's military so helping our veterans helps our active duty retain attract and recruit incoming new personnel and that helps our national security and i do want to uh, thank uh, general cushing who is here today for your service uh, to our country uh, and for uh, all the army personnel here who uh, serve our country and also those who are responsible for recruiting uh, new folks uh, to join our, our U.S. military. And so when you support veterans, not only is it the right thing to do, it helps our national security. So I want to thank everyone here uh, who uh, does that. And now let me... And now let me just conclude a little bit about uh, what my district office uh, can do for you. Uh, so. Uh, if, for example, uh, you are a veteran or know a veteran and you think that you were denied benefits or a check didn't arrive that you should have received from the VA, please contact our office. We'll help you. Uh, if any of you uh, need to travel and you all of a sudden realize that your passport is going to expire next week, give us a call. We can go ahead and uh, get you an emergency passport. Uh, if you're not getting your Social Security check uh, or a Medicare check or any other issue with a federal agency, please contact me uh, or my staff, my district director, Nico, is here, as well as my staff member, Janet, uh, and we will assist you. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to speak, and thank you all for helping our veterans uh, who have served our nation, the greatest nation in the world. Have a great day. I have to move it down. I'm a little short. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Gleen Davis. I currently serve on the Santa Monica City Council, and I want to echo Mayor Himmelrich's statement that we're so glad that we could all be here today to honor those who have made the decision voluntarily to serve this nation in uniform. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you. I have a son who and a daughter-in-law who are currently active duty military serving in the Army. One day they'll be veterans, and as Representative Lou said, it's important for them as well as everyone in this country to recognize that people who took that oath voluntarily to lay down their lives for our country deserve to be treated not only with the utmost respect, but by giving them the benefits that they've earned with their service to our country. I want to take a moment um, off script a little bit here to say not only is today Veterans Day, but it is also National Military Families Month. 
And while we honor the sacrifices of veterans today, we need to remember, and I've learned this with a son and daughter-in-law in the Army, that their families and loved ones and friends and supporters also make sacrifices. Whether it's a missed birthday or holiday, worrying about a loved one who's been put in harm's way, or simply just knowing that someone has made the promise to lay down their life for our country, can be taxing on a family and friends, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, children. And so if you know someone in the military, please tell them thank you for their service, but more importantly, thank their families as well. They serve as do all. So after the challenges of the last two and a half years, it is wonderful to be here in person in this gorgeous place and honoring the people who dedicated their lives to serving our country. To our veterans and their families, thank you for your valor, your love of country, and your dedication to putting country above self. Your service has shaped the lives of every person here today, and indeed every citizen of our country. Now, although we know Memorial Day is to honor those who lost their lives in service to our country, and Veterans Day is to honor those who proudly served, I would like to take a moment of silence to honor those who did lose their lives, as well as our living veterans, just to show our respect for them. So if you'll join me in a few seconds of silence, I would appreciate it. Thank you. In moments like this one, like the ones we find ourselves in now, service has never been more essential to our humanity, nor has the need for us to support each other and lift up one another. In the armed forces, individuals from different backgrounds come together and find common ground so they can work together for the goal of defending our country from those who would cause it harm and defending freedom around the world. And I think that spirit of unity is a great example of how we can move forward together as a country to begin healing and recovering and figuring out ways to make this country work for all of us in new and better ways. Please take time this month to reach out to veterans in your life, offer a personal thank you. Better yet, do it every day, not just today, not just this month, but every day. And show your gratitude by supporting groups, vet services and policies that center the needs of veterans. I know, for example, today we've been joined by Meals on Wheels West, our local Meals on Wheels provider, who has a number of veterans within their service area. And I'd like to give them a round of applause because they too serve. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Scott Painter, a proud Army veteran who out of high school enlisted in the U.S. Army and served as a linguist in the 82nd Airborne Division. From there, he attended West Point, Go Army! Before launching numerous innovative companies in the automotive and technology industries. Mr. Painter is the founder of Santa Monica-based Autonomy, the nation's largest electric vehicle subscription platform. Please welcome Scott Painter. Uh, thank uh, the mayor and also uh, Congressman Liu. Uh, Congressman, you, you may not know it, but uh, you also sponsored, uh, nominated my son to the Naval Academy this last year. Um, so thank you. Um, I also want to just really thank all of the veterans that are here today. You're not just honored guests, we're here to celebrate you. And um, as a veteran, I was deeply honored when Sankey asked me to be here today because no matter where I go or what I do, I always am reminded of the, the special commitment we have to those that have served. You know, I come from a, a family of veterans. One of my great-grandfathers served in World War I. Both of my grandfathers served in World War II. My father served in the Korean War. Both of my uncles served in Vietnam. And my service in the military began in 1987 as an enlisted soldier. I ended up attending West Point. And one of the you know, unique things about West Point is that most of my closest friends and lifelong relationships remain committed to lifelong service. As a result, I have family and friends that have fought in all of our nation's wars over the last century. I also know loss. I've lost classmates and friends in Iraq and Afghanistan and on 9-11. So I'm genuinely honored to be here today to honor them and remember them. 
So, not everybody knows, but we celebrate Veterans Day as we do every year to commemorate the ending of World War I. It's celebrated because on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we reached an armistice which ended the First World War. And I think it's fitting that it happens in late autumn, which seems like a good time for reflecting. I'm glad that we had great weather today. Earlier this week seemed like it was going to be a pretty cold day today. But I also think it's fitting that today happens on the week that we all go to vote, because it really is our duty. Um, given that to really honor and remember those who have served, we have to also think about those who have fought, those who st still serve at ports and bases across America and across the world. We have to think about those who are missing and those who have given their lives and sacrifice so that each of us may find freedom, peace, and happiness. But to remember that freedom is not free. That that statement, freedom is not free, is inscribed at the uh, Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C. It's a very, very important thing to remember. The uncommon courage and sacrifice that it takes means that words alone can never express our gratitude. Nothing is more important to the soul of America than remembering and honoring those who have served and given of themselves. So on this day, dedicated to the nation's veterans, we must remember their brave, the brave men and women who have by their service preserved our liberty, because veterans know better than anyone the price of freedom. They bear the scars of war. We can give them no better tribute than to cherish and protect what they have won for us. It's our duty. They've never let America down, and we can't ever let them down. So today, we lay wreaths, we have parades, we celebrate, and we say words of tribute for a reason. We must always remember, and we must be grateful as a nation that honors the valor, the bravery, the uncommon courage that our men and women in uniform represent. To all veterans, past and present, and to all those serving today, thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting our freedoms and putting yourself in harm's way to defend our way of life. It's because of you, that America's best days are still to come. In parting, I'll once again thank Sanki for inviting me today. I'm really honored. This is the first time that I've spoken at a Veterans Day celebration. I've been to dozens of these things and it really is touching. So I, I you know, my youngest son today asked me if I was gonna be nervous to speak and I said, you know, I've never been asked to speak at one of these things, but I'm not nervous. He's an introvert. He said I would be terrified. But I got to tell you, walking in here and seeing everybody in, in uniform really sort of um, makes me feel good and feel very much at home. This is my community. I'm proud to hire veterans. I'm proud to give them every opportunity we can to partner with them. And when I think back on my life and my career and all of the skills that have helped me to succeed, I learned all of them in the Army. So for those of you who are just starting your journey, good luck. God bless, and for all of those of you who have served, thank you for your service. Thank you so much, Scott. That really meant a lot, I think, to everyone here. Now I'd ask you to please direct your attention to your left for our junior ROTC drill team demonstration by John Monroe High School JROTC cadets. We'd now like to welcome Brig Brigadier General John Cushing from Fort Knox, Kentucky. He too was a West Point graduate, Go Army, and a highly decorated combat veteran. His awards include the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star Medal. He currently serves as the Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Army Recruiting Command, and he will conduct the future soldier swearing-in ceremony. Thank you so much, General Cushing. Thank you so much for having me. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give my, uh, give you guys a second to get the future soldiers lined up here, if you don't mind. Okay, first of all, I wanna thank all the, uh, sir, thank you for having me, and ma'am, thank you for having me as well uh, for today, and uh, for all the veterans that are out there, absolutely phenomenal to be amongst you. And I say amongst you because 
frankly, I'm not where I am today and I'm not able to enjoy the freedoms that we have today if it weren't for you. Because uh, we walked in the shadows of giants amongst many of the veterans. I'm fortunate to live in this country today because of the past that uh, many of you have chosen and the, the, the freedoms that you've defended for our country. And if you ever question whether or not we've got a bright future, I would just tell you that you look at the drill team that just competed and you look at these future soldiers that we're about to swear in and you've got nothing to worry about. I state your name. Hi, Robert. Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I'll obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations, according to the regulations, and the uniform code of military justice, and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause.